Hi there. So I just thought what I would do is uh, take you through some of the pieces of equipment that we uh, we recommend that you take with you uh, for any outdoor adventure, but um, some of the pieces of equipment that always live in our uh, trusty rucksacks here. Um, the first and foremost, absolutely 100%, it's got to be a Mora knife. Okay. These come from uh, Sweden. They're inexpensive knives. They are probably the best knife um, on the market for any kind of money. Um, you've heard me talk about other Mora knives before, and these are about the width of your palm, Scandinavian edge, through tang, absolutely the best, absolutely the best bit of kit you can buy. I think they retail for about uh, six pounds, seven pounds, maybe ten, twelve bucks, something like that. Okay. How I normally carry it is around my neck and I normally carry a light my fire fire seal on here for making uh, sparks and lighting fires and it also works in the wet a uh, little LED head a uh, little LED light here as well so I can see where I'm going after uh, the toilet in the middle of the night or whatever and a small compass here as well just uh, so I can find my way back from the toilet and uh, also around the neck bit you'll find it's 550 paracord and there's two loops of this which is enough to make a bow drill string if I need to um, or an impromptu fishing line or those type of things and on the back of here what I have is a 600 grit piece of uh, wet and dry paper um, uh, double sided tape to the back here so I can use that as a, a, a somewhat of a strop if I need to touch the edge up on my blade in the outback now that is um, my basic Mora rig setup that I use uh, on all my courses, and this is the rig that you'll see me wear uh, a lot of, the, a lot of the, in a lot of the videos that we do. Um, just another couple of, di of options here. We just be down to the supermarket here, and they have these on sale for three euros ten. This is a Halter Force. This is another Mora knife, uh, exactly the same as it has an orange handle, exactly the same setup. This will cost you about four euros, and this little puppy here I picked up. Um, it's still a Mora knife. It's made by a uh, Mora uh, company. It is a stainless steel blade rather than a carbon steel. I prefer carbon steel, but you pay your money, you take your choice. Um, this little puppy here cost me one euro ten, one euro twenty cents, which is about a pound uh, or about a buck seventy-five at um, at uh, the exchange rate today. These are superb. Very very good. Uh, I've battened with it. I've stripped with it. I've uh, made feather sticks, all of those bits and pieces, really good knife, astonishing value, one euro twenty, crazy. Okay, a couple of other things that absolutely 100% you need to take with you. Flashlight. We tend to have red flashlights or blue flashlights for uh, tracking. Certainly the red is a better option if you're moving around at night, preserve your night vision, uh, and it's not so harsh if you flash it into somebody's eyes. Um, but obviously, you know, daytime torch or you know, daylight uh, torches as well are a good idea. My own personal preference is um, a head torch with a red setting. And the reason that I have a, head a red, head, red torch with a head setting, sorry, a head torch with a red setting, is that I spend a lot of time walking around camps with students and I don't want to blind them once the night vision's become in involved. Um, this is a really good way of just checking pots and pans and stuff like that at, uh, after midnight and finding your way backwards and forwards to camps. Being that it's on your head, your hands are free to do anything else. A couple of different models here. I recommend the Energizer ones. They're inexpensive, but they're very, very reliable. Um, I get the one with two settings, white and red. Um, this is a Petzl version. This one, I think, cost around £12 when I bought it, which is about 15 to 18 bucks. This one is about uh, 30 bucks, and it's a Petzl of different things. It's more of a backup light than anything else. They are good. They're very, very fit right in your pocket um, and weigh about 30 grams, uh, a couple of ounces. So um, again, with a red setting, absolutely a must. Carrie talked to you earlier about Strike Anywhere friction matches. Um, I carry them in a waterproof capsule in here. Um, allows me to keep the snow out and those type of things. And also, you know, they they're, they're Strike Anywhere, so they'll strike uh, pretty much anywhere. Um, nice seal tight waterproof matchbox. I also carry an extra piece of my emery paper in there just to strike it on. And the other thing that I keep in here is a few fish hooks and where is it? And a sewing needle. And the reason that I keep a sewing needle in there is to remove splinters and those type of things. Okay.
What else should you put in your rucksack? 550 paracord, absolutely 100, 30 to 50 feet of 550 paracord, 7 to 9 arm spans, maybe 10 arm spans length. Um, the right stuff is the stuff that's got the uh, green outer or the whatever colour outer and the seven strands inside. You want to be looking for that and it should have a breaking strain of 550 pounds. It's just absolutely the best thing to carry in the woods. Uh, really good, makes snares and just about everything, keeps everything together. Really good. Okay, the next thing, item that I'm going to show you is a polar candle or a church candle. Polar candle make these lovely uh, uh, polypropylene plastic candles with a steering candle inside. Um, basically, these are absolute bomb-proof uh, ways of uh, lighting a shelter. We use them in the snow shelter that you see talk carry in earlier. Um, we use these as trail tents. We use them on all of our camps. So light, inexpensive, easy to use. There's no working uh, parts to go wrong, and they're. I think these ones cost about a uh, buck and a half each, or two two pound each, something something like that. I don't know. They're just not very expensive at all. This ca this candle here burns for 96 hours. You know, you get six of those, put them in a backpack, you've got enough for pretty much a, a week underground. So, there we go. Okay, so, next little bits and pieces. Um, I'm in love with this at the moment. This is my Howlite GSI uh, alloy tea kettle. It's about a litre capacity in there. Um, we have used this on campfires, we have used it on spirit burners, we have used it on wood stick fires. It just it absolutely bomb proof. It's really good. Made by GSI. Trangia do another option, another uh, version of this in aluminium, which is just as good. Um, I just like the orange handle. Orange is my thing. So that's a really good bit of kit. Um, you will have seen it in, again in when we were doing the uh, demonstration in the um, in the igloo or in the Quincy. Sorry, um, you may have seen my little spirit stove there. If you've got my coat can video, you know how to this, you know, this, this goes together. This is just a, a slightly more um, machined version of that. It exa works exactly the same way. Um, works on methylated spirits, or in this case, silosol, which is the local equivalent of that here in Finland. Um, 30 grams of that will boil a litre of water in about six or seven minutes. It's excellent, really, really good. And again, this weighs, this whole kit, this whole stove outfit weighs about, uh, I guess, about... 30 to 60 grams, something like that. It's just an aluminium windshield. Really good, excellent bits of kit. The other thing that I wanted to show you was my ditch kit or my last resort kit, and uh, this has a lot of different items in it that I'm going to have to open up to show you, so I'll show you that in uh, just a few minutes' time. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. More knife, signals, lights. Um, the only thing that I other thing is a, a drinking cup. I like these ones which are uh, plastic, they come from Scandinavia, um, but any kind of drinking cup that's not metal so it doesn't freeze to your lips in these conditions is great. And um, yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you.